kind of just drank a lot of alcohol. He got drunk. He had a good time. Sometimes he got sick. I mean, everyone was there for the same, same reason. And a lot of times we're finding students that are just laying out somewhere in the grass or in the stairwell or, or you know, just the effects of that um, overindulgence into the alcohol. Just most of that comes back here. Um, running around, destroying things, uh, making a mess, ruckus. Uh, the atmosphere um, in the morning is very, very uh, calm. But uh, at nighttime, I'd say the atmosphere, you know, it's probably like a uh, wild kingdom out there. Well, I've lived here for about 12 years. So we've seen the campus and we've seen the neighborhoods on all sides of the campus for several years. I have two children and I'm married and we like our neighborhood. We love living here. We've been in this house since 19, January of 1977. And uh, the neighborhood uh, was very quiet. It was comprised of families that were first time owners, the original owners, or the children of the original owners and uh, it was a very nice neighborhood. It's a diverse community and we enjoy that. Kids get to see all kinds of things and we like living near the college. There's a lot of opportunities there. There are a lot of events that we can attend uh, and it just makes for a nice life. It's an older, close-knit community. We do have some newer developments and they blend it in nicely with the existing communities. It's just a nice little hometown feel. It's not too big and it's not too small. So I was born and raised here and decided to stay here and raise my family and love it here. Uh, I was uh, born and raised in Glassboro, so I've lived here uh, all my life. I've seen the town change over uh, the period of my life from being a fairly uh, small community to a community that has, uh, has grown and uh, with that the growth of uh, the college or the university as it is uh, known now. Um, you know, when I was growing up, uh, there were probably 5,000 people in Glassboro. Now there's probably close to 20,000, not counting, maybe not counting the students. And um, so the town has really, has really changed over the period of my lifetime here. About 20 years ago, we had the house next door uh, was sold to um, a family that moved their son and college students in. And that was not a good experience. Uh, we had problems with um, students drinking and throwing them up, up outside, urinating outside. And uh, if we could have gone outside, I would have shown you my azaleas where they used to be or all gone because of that experience. When we first moved on, and we lived on the other side of campus, there were kids walking to and fro at all hours of the night, even though we didn't have any college students living near us. We could hear them walking from one location to the other on a Friday night late. And it was a little disturbing. Um, I will be honest and say that that has increased over the past 12 years. Unfortunately, it's gotten a lot worse. It's a pretty big deal because a lot of the students here, um, you know, do engage in drinking activities. My partying habits are drinking beer, um, drinking hard alcohol with my friends, two out of three, two to three days out of the week. When I was a freshman, I, I just didn't care. I, I drank a lot, I smoked a lot, and I did things like, like there was no tomorrow. I do find that a lot of my residents do go off campus and drink, and I think that's primarily because they know it's not tolerated here, but also because, you know, they're going to do it anyway. So it would start out generally frat houses, sorority houses, because when you're a freshman, they're, they're all about getting people to come out and rush, so you kind of check out what they're all about and some people end up doing it, some people don't. But then you move up to campus crossings and Beauregard off-campus places, even some houses on, on the local residential areas. And uh, once everyone turns 21, everyone generally has their 21st birthday at Landmark. So after that, people generally like going there. If, if they're walking down the street and they need to vomit, they, instead of vomiting in the street, <laughs> they'll vomit on people's properties, on their bushes, you know, on the trees, which they might not realize, but it does do damage to the to the shrubberies and the trash. The, we talk about the red tide because in the springtime or in the fall when they first arrive, there's always a tide of red cups. The weekends can be um, very uh, disturbing. Uh, the parties that go on uh, can, can be a, a real problem with the number of students who attend these parties 
uh, sometimes they can have 50 to 75 to 100 st students at a, at a given party in a house. Uh, they had a party at a house down the street and uh, the noise was so loud that uh, 12 o'clock uh, people called the police. Uh, they had counted 130 people at that party. And uh, when, they, when they disbanded the party, uh, the noise continued for a period of time because the people at the party had to go home and they walked down the street in, in groups of 20, 25 people and uh, making uh, noise uh, as they walked back to campus. The foot traffic on the neighboring street where the fraternity is was packed with college kids. I happened to look out my window just packed with kids nonstop. We could hear a lot of noise. Unbeknownst to us at that time, there had been a party, or there was a party at the fraternity house. Uh, it was so bad that most of the neighbors on that street went to the borough council or the business administrator that Monday and complained. And ever since then, we've had a community town gown uh, relationship, which has really helped. Um, after a lot of prodding by the, uh, the owner of the home, uh, the fraternity kids had to find another place to live. Uh, we went out to my friend's car after drinking for a while to get something and I took a piss in the parking lot and before I was done even peeing, the cop was halfway through the ticket, just asked me for my ID, I handed my ID, just wrote my name in. And, handed me a ticket. When I got my alcohol violation, I was living in Chestnut. It was my freshman year. I had about three people over my room. Had some music on a little. I didn't think it was too loud. And um, that's basically what drew the attention. We had a, a handle of whiskey that I uh, had in the room. And there was a bottle of wine and a couple six packs of beers. So I got a knock on the door from the RA. and. Uh, so she left and then five minutes later she returned with two RAs and one of the RAs kind of pushed the door open and uh, saw that we were drinking. He like checked some cups and finally found one that had alcohol in it. And then from there on out it was, uh, it was a nice write up and a nice online survey called eChug. We're not trying to categorize the students as bad uh, people. They're, for the most part, they're young. A lot of them have been away from home for the first time, and they have freedom that you know that they haven't experienced before, and they try to use that freedom, and that's that's understandable. Most of the neighbors who live in at least this neighborhood, and probably throughout Glassboro, have been to college. So we've experienced living off campus and the freedom that you can enjoy with that. These students have to understand that uh, they're they're coming for a short period of time, uh, four years at most maybe some of them are a little bit longer than that, but four years, and they're, they're coming into uh, communities where the people have lived for 30, 40, 50, some, some cases longer than that, and they have to understand that um, their behaviors and their actions uh, impact those people who live in these communities. But the senior citizens don't know what to do, or they're afraid. And it's really unfair for them. They've been living here for a long time. They can't leave. They have nowhere to go, or they don't have the money. So these are the kinds of people that I would like to protect. And these are the kinds of people that the college kids, please, think about those people. It would be your grandmother, your grandfather, your, your elderly aunts or uncles living next to you. Um, they're, they're the ones that I'd like to, to keep safe. You need to take a step back and, and um uh, try to understand the position of the residents uh, who live in these neighborhoods, who live in the community, I mean, and, and try to um, approach it as they would at home. We had a situation a few years ago where there was problems in the neighborhoods with off-campus um, activity by the students uh, affecting the residents late at night with maybe some citizen complaints. And uh, so through that relationship, we started having uh, meetings where we invited uh, uh, people from uh, students, uh, landlords, residents, uh, administration, and public safety from Rowan as well as from the borough. One of the reasons why we have this this quarterly or not quarterly uh, by every other month meeting uh, with the students because we want to hear their side and we want it we want the residents to hear their side and 
figure out, okay, how do we coexist? And if they get to hear what some of the residents' complaints are, and the residents get to hear what some of the concerns of the students are, it starts a dial a constructive dialogue and can actually, you know, make things things better. So I think by um, by having this dialogue, it's, it's helped the relationship grow. We're interested in working with the students and seeing if there's any way we can learn more about what their needs are and also to let them know what our needs are. If other people, maybe it's not you, a lot of times it isn't the kids who are renting the home, it's their friends. You're on the lease, so it is your responsibility. If you see your friends getting out of hand, bring them inside. If you have a party, the next morning, get out there and pick up the trash. Because we're both occupying the town at the same time. And uh, I think as long as we're respectful of each other's needs, uh, things will just keep on improving. Going to school in a residential area is definitely tough because there's a lot more complaints. Uh, there's a lot more people just around to care about what you're doing. Whereas if you go somewhere that's just the college, you know, you're just dealing with A, college kids, and B, the faculty. And um, being in a residential area adds, you know, a C factor of, you know, people that, that are actually trying to live their lives. Keep um, the lines of communications open. I think that's probably the key to getting along better in the future. We go downstairs and we tell our neighbors, like, we're going to have a party tonight. If anything, can you come up and knock on the door? If, like, if we're bothering you, like, let us know instead of taking it to somebody else. Like, just come straight to us and we'll fix it. We have several different uh, student neighbors. We have a group of kids across the street, nice kids always. In fact, one night they had a party. Uh, Paul came over and s let me know in advance. And it was a Friday night, but at about 1 o'clock they were loud. My bedroom was close to the house. So I went over there, I asked Paul, could you keep it quiet or go inside? And he was so accommodating, it was perfect. For as many complaints as, as I get, but we also get some of the residents saying, hey, you know, our neighbors are Kyle Rowan's students and they helped us out with this or that, or, you know, made us cookies or a cake or invited us to a party or, you know, cut the, uh, a neighbor's uh, grass when they were an el elderly person who didn't have anybody else to do it or shoveled their walk. So I hear a lot of positives too from, from the residents, just as much as I hear the negatives. We've made um, steps toward peaceful coexistence by having our community meetings uh, that we've been uh, having with the Barrow Hall. Uh, I was happy to see students attending the meetings. They see Rowan University as an asset. They like being and living in a college community. And I think they look at the majority of the students as good, productive um, citizens of the town. Uh, unfortunately, there's the small percentage that misbehave and unfortunately give the, the, the students a bad rap, bad rap when it's maybe not necessarily deserved. Think of your grandparents living next door to you and, and would you really want them to see you doing some of the things you're doing? Try to be mature about it. You can still have fun and be mature. Now I've um, I've gotten more serious with schoolwork. I've gotten more serious with uh, with a career, and um, I've got my future in mind. So now it's it's much more calmed down. It's much more um, you know I do things with with uh, tomorrow in in mind. I feel my violation was a was a good experience in the long run. I mean it taught me. It taught me to be more careful, and granted that I got caught on such a small scale, I wasn't having a full-blown party, there wasn't you know, massive amounts of alcohol being consumed. Um, it kind of gave me a quick wake-up call before anything could have escalated in the future. You know, if I got away with it that time, I would have continued to do bigger things and maybe had more people over, and you, know, you always run the risk of alcohol poisoning and, and people just getting sick in general, so um, it helped me stay safer. And, be more responsible with my drinking. We're paying to live here, they're paying to live here. It's it's their house, it's their home. We're just here for a couple of years. They might be here for a couple of decades. It's their town.